We're just going to add a couple simple derivative rules. I'm not even going to prove them for you. Just going to, these are just rules that you apply. We'll just go, I mean, it's, at this point, it's, you know, just follow the rule and there's nothing to it. Uh, what do we know? I mean, this is one, we've technically already talked about this, but I don't think I ever wrote it down. So this is just telling us that the derivative of a constant is zero, right? And we already knew that. The derivative of a sum or a difference, you know, we talked about that yesterday as differentiating term by term. Right? We just differentiate each term separately. Okay. Does this notation make sense? Anybody see that when we say the derivative with respect to x of like of f of x? Well, what is that? That's f prime, isn't it? Right? Anybody see that? And, that? and that's what this operation means. We're differentiating everything in the brackets. We're differentiating, taking the derivative off. Right? Uh, we know our generalized power rule. So these are the three new ones we're adding today. And I got a mistake on there, I see right now. We got to fix something. That should be a negative. A negative sine x. Okay? So here are the three new ones. The derivative of sine x is positive cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. That's pretty bizarre. Think about that. An exponential function, think what the implication of that is. Everybody just click them close for a second and focus up here. I want you to, this is, this is one of the wonders of math you've got to appreciate. So what's that tell you about an exponential function? You know, we know what the graph looks like, right? Exponential function, what's y equals e to the x look like? Good, okay, I'm seeing the, kind of that. It's asymptotic on the negative x-axis. Where does it cross the y-axis? So if I'm, if I'm graphing y equals e to the x, where does that cross the y-axis? Where would its y-intercept be? What's true of x at the y-intercept? Okay, how'd you get that, right? Because if x is going to be Yeah, good. e to the 0. Anything to the 0 is 1, isn't it? Good. So it's going to cross. Very good. Good thing. So it crosses the y-axis at, at 1, and then it just increases exponentially from there, right? Okay. What does this tell you, though? If y is equal to e to the x, and if I take the derivative of that, I get y prime equals e to the x. That's pretty crazy. Somebody articulate that. What's, what's, so, what's, what's going on there? If I plug in x equals 10, the, the value of the function is e to the 10. What's the value of the slope? It's the same. e to the 10. The slope is always the same as the value of the function. Pretty bizarre. What do you think? I think it is. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do the proof. So, like, let's just look at a couple very quick examples then. And this is, and I'm going to let you work. So, if f of x is 3 e to the x, what's f prime of x? 3, three e to the x. Can I leave the 3 out front and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, right? If f of x is x squared plus e to the x, then I'm going to get a 2x plus e to the x. And then cosine x minus e to the x. OK. And let's get that just to achieve. Yeah, I think I'm going to let you work. I'll let you work. Caveat that I want you to ask me some questions. Can you go back to the first thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah.